Hi, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I want to show you a really cool power feeder setup that I have in my shop. Power feeders are great because they let you do a lot of repetitive ripping in a very safe and efficient manner. And the reason we don't see them throughout home woodworking shops is because up until now they really had to be mounted to the table saw. And if you have a power feeder permanently bolted somewhere on your table saw, you're severely limiting the capabilities that you have with your saw, and it's way too much work to unbolt and rebolt these things every time you want to use it. So MagSwitch came up with a system to allow you to quickly lock this on anywhere on your table saw, and then just as quickly unlock it and move it out of the way. My friend Andy Klein told me about it, and he actually works with MagSwitch to help develop some really cool tools. And as soon as he told me he had a prototype, I went straight over his house and I took it from his shop when he wasn't looking. Now MagSwitch is going to sell this as a kit. The kit's going to include the magnets, all the hardware that you need, and the templates. All you have to do is get the plywood, cut it, and put it together. I obviously couldn't wait for that, so after I liberated this from Andy, I took it apart and took his plywood off to really see how this thing goes together. And you can see from what we got here, it's really pretty simple. Just a basic plywood frame. This is half inch Baltic birch plywood, which is really strong. And that's really what holds the whole thing together, bolts to the power feeder and allows you to put the power feeder anywhere you want. Now plywood is fine for Andy, but I can't be caught using plywood. And if he comes over to my shop, I gotta make sure that he doesn't think this is his. So I made my own parts out of exotic woods. I've got Paduk and Wenge here. Now I didn't really have the paper templates because this is sort of an unauthorized copy here, but I did have Andy's uh, base and I have my measuring tape and so I just went about cutting all my parts to be basically the same as his. My, my material is a little bit thicker here, but it goes together in pretty much the same way. I didn't really show how to cut all these pieces exactly to size. The measurements are all pretty straightforward and I figure if you've come this far in your woodworking career, certainly you can cut these straight square pieces on your own. So I'm just going to focus on putting it together and touching on some of the finer points. The first of those being this cork rubber. Now I don't know the actual specs on this material, but I do know that it has an unbelievable coefficient of static friction. What this means is when it's held down snugly against the table saw surface, it takes a huge amount of force to get it to move. It doesn't want to move, it wants to stay stuck. So we're going to glue some of that on here, and I'm kind of getting tired of putting the CA glue on like that. It's too slow. So obviously the best way to put this stuff on is to just get involved. Now obviously CA can burn you, so if you were to try something foolish like this, you're probably going to want to double glove and get your hands out of that glove probably within a few seconds. But I've done that. I've got a nice even coat, and on the cork rubber, I'm going to go ahead and spray the accelerator. And that way when I bring these two into contact, I've got to be real careful to get them perfect because they're going to set almost immediately. And that's what that looks like there. And then I'm just going to kind of go around the perimeter and freeze up any little bit of extra that might have squeezed out. And I'll just trim that off with a knife. So I don't really know where Andy sourced this cork rubber from, but it's really good stuff. He also includes this with the twin turbo vices that he has designed and he sells on his channel. And you can see with just very little downward force, it's really hard to move this on the table saw. And my saw is even a little bit dusty right now. So it's, it's good stuff. And if you don't know who Andy Klein is, you really got to go check out his channel. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description below. He is a fantastic woodworker, an engineer. He designs some amazing stuff. Uh, go check out his channel and subscribe to him. I think you'll really uh, enjoy the stuff that he does. Um, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and assemble this. And the whole assembly is really straightforward. I'm just kind of showing you step by step here how I do it. Uh, the center piece I do already have assembled, the Paduk piece, and these I'm basically screwing the two pieces of Wenge to the magnets uh, using the holes that I, had, I drilled earlier. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward how that all goes together. And Andy, like I said, has got a complete set of instructions on how to put this together. And I believe Paul Jackman does too. You should know who Paul Jackman is. If, if not, there's something wrong with you. You're going to need to go to his channel and check out his video of this. And, and while you're there, look through his channel and subscribe. He's also a fantastic woodworker. Yeah, he's a great guy, so it's definitely worth checking him out. I'll also make sure I have a link to Paul's channel and to Paul's build of the power feeder base in the description down below so that you can go and look at that after you leave here. 
All right, so now we have to attach these together, but we want to make sure that when we do, we get some compression. We want the uh, cork rubber underneath here to compress. Now the magnet's touching tight on both sides, and we want to make sure, sure the center's touching. But it's not going to be able to compress unless we lift the magnet up just a little bit. That way when the magnet activates, it pulls down really hard and squishes that cork rubber and sort of compresses it down into the tabletop to give us that friction that we need. So I've got two pieces of paper on either side, just lifting those magnets up a few thousandths of an inch. And I'm holding everything down to pre-drill the hole. I'm going to drill one hole first and then put a screw in. And I'm holding both down. I'm holding both the Wenge and the Paduk down tight in order to put that in. And then I'll move to the other side and I'll do the same thing. I'll drill the hole over there while I'm holding everything down, the inside and the outside piece down nice and snug. We'll drill that hole and then we'll put that screw in. And again, I'll make sure that I'm holding down everything real tight when I do that. That's going to ensure that everything has a good snug fit when it's all done. Then we can follow up with the middle two holes. When that's done, I'm just going to carefully rotate everything back around to the other side and I'll repeat the same procedure over here. Now you should also notice that I have built this whole thing on my cast iron surface of my table saw because that's the flattest surface that I have in the shop. And it's important that everything stays perfectly flat for this assembly operation. And it doesn't matter if you're using half inch thick plywood or if you're using some thicker wood like I'm using here, the procedure is exactly the same. You're going to follow the same steps, uh, use the same shims of paper, and in the end the result will be the same. And that thing is locked down nice and solid. In fact, it's so tight, I imagine I could drag my 900 pound table saw around the shop. And just like that, it releases just as easy too. That's all there was to making the base. It literally took me about 60 minutes to cut the pieces and put everything together in my shop. And it probably only took that long because I took the time to sand it down and throw a quick lacquer finish on it. So now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the power feeder on top. Now the power feeder we're putting on here is Grizzly's Baby Power Feeder. It's a 1 8 horsepower power feeder, so you're not going to be using it for really big, long, thick, heavy planks of wood. It probably doesn't have the power to drive those, but it's great for smaller things, smaller pieces of wood that you know, you're going to do in large repetition. And as far as power feeders go, it's really inexpensive. It's a $350 power feeder. There's a lot of power feeders that get considerably more expensive uh, in the $1,000, $1,500, $1,800 range. Uh, but this is this is a fantastic uh, entry level point into getting into power feeders. Once I got all those on and made sure the fit was right, we're going to go ahead and snug them down. So my daughter Sai is going to hold that at the back, and I'm going to go ahead and crank them down until they're very snug. In addition to that cork rubber, which is pretty amazing stuff itself, the really cool thing about this setup is the power of these magnets. Collectively, these magnets have a thousand pounds of holding force. So I think the power feeder is somewhere in the 60 pound range, but this these magnets are actually being held down with a thousand pounds of force. That's what makes them so strong. And that's what makes it really amazing because the base with the magnets just weighs a few pounds, and yet it has that kind of holding power. And with just a flip of a switch, you can remove it. So that's pretty cool. And it's got incredible versatility. You can actually mount this anywhere on your table saw. So you're not fixed to just certain positions like you would be if you ended up bolting this to your table saw, which is what all production shops have to do. I can lift it up from here. I can move it forward or backwards or even to the other side if I had cast iron on both sides of my blade. My particular saw doesn't, but a lot of saws do. And then you can extend this in or out or up or down or, you know, all different ways. So it's pretty convenient, very, very versatile. I get the feeling I could almost break the joints on this machine long before that magnet would let go. And obviously the joints on the machine are plenty strong enough to handle the job you want to do, so it's a pretty good setup. If you think a power feeder is a good fit for your shop, then check out the description below. I'm going to put a link to this power feeder base kit in the description below, and you can check on that and go over to MagSwitch and pick one up. They'll be shipping in May, but now's a good time to get your order in, so you'll get yours first thing as soon as they ship. Remember, the kit has everything you need except for the wood. You'll have to provide that. 
But if you order one early, leave a comment for me below. I'm going to have a drawing of everybody that leaves a comment and buys one of these kits. And I'm actually going to give away my base for free. Obviously not the magnets. Sooner or later, Andy's going to figure out that I have them and he's going to come looking for them. But you will get the base, the Paducah and Wingate base that I built. Okay, so one more little video clip here of when I first got the machine back to my house. I set up and cut some of the material that I had glued up for our multi-species mallet heads. So this was back last November, December when I was building this. And I'll show you how easy this thing was for me to set up and make these cuts. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of playing with it and I figured it all out in about one minute. It's that it was really that easy. I just mounted the base anywhere. I didn't really think about putting it in one particular spot. And then I just rotated the head over to a point that I felt was good. And then I adjusted the height to grab this uh, block of wood in order to pass it through. And this is some pretty serious cutting. This would normally take a power feeder, probably something that has a little more power than this. I've got my blade raised up three inches, so I'm cutting through three by three blocks here. I'm cutting all three inches in one pass. I do have a 12 inch blade on my table saw. It just makes, for, when I do production work, it makes it a little bit easier for me. And that's it, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, the, this particular power feeder does have speeds. I have it on the lowest speed. I should have sped it up here, but uh, I got, found I got a little bit cleaner cut if I kept it slower, and so I just left it on a slow speed. And that's really basically it. I just put the wood in, and it just carried it through, and I didn't have to hold my hands over there near the blade. I just made sure I held on to it until it first got pulled into the blade a little bit. And that was all there was to it. I went through all these pretty fast. I think I probably made uh, 1,000 rips or so, uh, maybe more than that, maybe a couple thousand rips uh, in total. Uh, between all the pieces that I did for the mallets this past year. And I used this power feeder for everything. It was really great. So that's really it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.